Oh, welcome back to Lawrence McKenna channel. What do you do when two sides draw in the Premier League? You criticise them both. And you point out how a lot of the broad things that are happening this season in the Premier League for a lot of the big teams are affecting the managers at the very top. And especially because those systems are, in fact, trying to be the most progressive, if not actually being the most progressive. Both Graham Potter and Jurgen Klopp set up their teams in such progressive ways and in such ways that... If it doesn't quite work out, then it can go terribly wrong for them. But today they're both set up quite conservatively. And that was what was quite interesting about this game. Neither side ever really looked like they were going for the big win. When I say the big win, I mean like really putting it on the other team. Apart from Chelsea towards the end of the second half when they had like five minute window. And Liverpool at the end of the at the beginning of the second half when they had their five minute window. Of course, there were some good performances on Chelsea's side. I felt like Liverpool looked a little flat. I felt that Jurgen Klopp's ro lack of rotation, possibly, or, you know, lack of change in the midfield was either going to be something which was going to reward him or was going to be something that could make the game quite flat like this. Because you could clearly see that Bicetic was trying to have a solid game. Thiago and Keita were both really not at it today. Neither of them particularly found uh, the rhythm that they needed to find in the game. And those two really would have been the rhythm makers within the side. And when those two aren't on, then everyone else doesn't eat as well. You could see Salah look quite isolated. Go to Gakpo through the middle. I just still wonder about his positioning, about his thought processes, about how he's being coached, about the players around it, the kind of things that they're actually looking to do with them. I'm still not quite sure what it is that Cody Gakpo is trying to achieve at Liverpool. And I'm not, if that's more from his performances than what I know I would like him to do. We all know that we want him to get on the field, link up with Darwin Nunez, be that just off the striker player. Maybe he plays as like a second striker. Maybe he plays as a th can you have like two second strikers? So sort of one main striker and two second strikers like Salah, like whoever else you want to put in there. And I think that would be a great solution for him. But it just never really came off for him. And actually, a lot of his touches gave Ch Chelsea back a lot of possession. I didn't quite know where they were going. And most of the time you could see he's not quite learned where Liverpool need him to play. Fair enough. He's a young player and he's still progressing. And Liverpool, they need to take responsibility for those things. On the opposite side, Mo Salah, extremely isolated. At times he had to come back and just try and get the ball. Didn't quite work with that combination of him and James Milner because, well, it's just that combination of him and James Milner. It's not ever going to be him, Trent and Hendo or him, Trent and someone on the inside. Naby Keita drifts quite a bit, so he, he never quite gives the support to Salah that Salah would like on that side. And the balance wasn't really there in the, in the squad, like I said. At the same time, you could tell they were trying to protect James Milner. You could tell that they were trying to sit a little bit deeper and then try and get the ball out. But here's the thing. Both Chelsea and Liverpool are both trying to change their positional play at the moment. They're both trying to change the formation that they play. Both managers or sets of coaches have worked this out and they knew how to cancel out the opposition passes. Chelsea, way more than Liverpool. Liverpool actually looked extremely predictable today. And I can, I can kind of understand it. I think when you're coaching uh, like a new system into a team, there's going to be transitional periods where... Players telegraph things a very long time ahead where the players don't still look like they have confidence. Jordan Henderson said this after the last game. The players don't have confidence right now. And you can still sort of see it. There are times where they go for long passes and they've not quite hit with the conviction that you need for the pass to just go to exactly where you need it to go. That means that Chelsea players, often, especially the fullbacks, could nip in, take the ball and they're away. And like Klopp said in the pre-match... When that happens, there's loads of space to them, for them to run into because you're transitioning out and they want to hit on the counter-attack of that. And that's exactly what Brighton did. And of course, if Brighton can do it, there's a very high likelihood that someone like Graham Potter could do it, right? So Chelsea were really trying to exploit that. I, thought, I didn't think Chelsea played great. Obviously, they didn't. They drew 0-0 with Liverpool. And I think both sides were sort of thinking, hey, what is it in this game that we need to do to just about nick it, get away, and we've got a decent result, but not a great one away from home or at home, right? Both sides, quite long confidence. Both sides, poor runner form. I mean, Chelsea haven't had an away win since uh, September, is it now? So that's almost three months that Chelsea haven't had an away win. Maybe it was late August. So, sure, there's that. And then there's the opposite side of it where, you know, there, there are small improvements that you see as well throughout the team. You do love to see Bicetic playing, though. He doesn't quite have the bite that you want. You do love to see a second unit of players come on and Liverpool continue that intensity. The shape looks very sure. There are lots of positives when Liverpool do bring on explosive players. I really enjoyed Darwin Nunez. 
I just didn't think Liverpool could find him. And again, I felt it was because there was no route through the midfield to try and get him more into the game, get him more engaged and get him higher up. The back line looked really deep, so they were really far away. They couldn't quite get those balls over the top. And Thiago today wasn't spraying around in the way that he want to. Neither was Naby Keita. And obviously then they brought on Fabinho, Curtis Jones and Henderson. And in the end, the team ends up looking a bit like a mishmash of players that we're not quite sure how to analyse as Liverpool fans. And the reason I say that is because we know what Klopp's like traditional great starting eleven would be, right? We know also that with Italy, even though we have what our starting eleven would be, that starting eleven that you would name of the classic Jurgen Klopp era only ever played once together. So while we're busy saying like, oh well, you know, it was a it, it was a very consistent side, but while we're busy saying that, hey, you know, uh, we need consistent players, we need those leaders back, all these kind of things, change has been a constant. And I get it, like there's been consistency, but change and evolution has been a constant at Liverpool for a couple of years now. It's just that this change is so drastic, is so different, is such a big change in system for Liverpool. You can see Harvey Elliott was out wide, took him out the midfield, which I think is great, but also kind of took him out the game where you want him to be. When he drifted inside, I actually kind of enjoyed that. I think I'd love to see more of Harvey Elliott just sort of used as an attacking entity rather than having to go both ways. Though I understand you have to defend if you're in the side, but you get the point, the emphasis should be more the other way for someone like Harvey Elliott. And then I also think that Liverpool at the moment really lack balance in that front line. You've got Salah, you've got, Gakpo's obviously not a striker through the middle, and then you've obviously always got someone else, be that Oxley chamberlain be that Harvey Elliott on that far side, who's just not quite balancing out the front line enough, enough right now. And it basically allows the opposition to go, we don't need to focus on him. That's frustrating, isn't it? And also considering how many left-sided players Liverpool have bought in recent years, would you kind of expect that we could balance out this team? Andy Robertson tries to make up for it, and I get it. But any time that a fullback pushes on at the moment, Liverpool look vulnerable. And Liverpool look vulnerable throughout the game. So many times where Chelsea went forward, you just thought, uh-oh. When the when Mudrik came on, you knew that Liverpool had to counter by taking Milner off. No disrespect to Milner. I thought he was very solid in this game. But again, it's all well and good getting crosses in. A lot of these chances aren't quality. A lot of there's you understand the quality that Trent has when he comes on and the way that he was able to just drift all over the field. I was a bit like, why is this? Why have we subbed off Milner, who is a very solid right back for Trent, who's now drifting all over the place? Where's Mudrick gone? Where? There was no, the shit, clearly both sides were trying to make changes and didn't, it didn't quite come off. I'll put it that way. So it was a frustrating game today for Liverpool. I'm still, I still think Joe Gomez is clearly a backup centre-back and I think that's fair enough to say. I also think that Canate needs a consistent partner. Sadly, that consistent partner would ideally be Virgil van Dijk. Not in the side right now. So I do wonder if Liverpool are going to look elsewhere for another centre-back next after, say, this summer. And whether that pushes someone like Joe Gomez down in the pecking order, whether it pushes Matip down in the pecking order and basically they have two slash three core centre-backs. Canate, insert one, Van Dijk. And as Van Dijk gets older, they'll transition him out of the side because they need a new A side in that back line. I feel bad for Alisson. Alisson had to make some amazing saves today. I don't mean like athletic. I just mean like make position himself in just the right place, be in the right place at the right time. And then obviously you've also got the original offside goal. You, I don't really think that's very significant in the first place. Maybe it gives the opposition some form of hope, but at the same time, it was an offside goal. I'm still not quite sure whether it works. I mean, that's not why offside was created, if that makes sense. So it doesn't seem in the spirit of the game. But to the letter of the law, it was offside. So it is what it is. Liverpool maybe got off a little bit lucky there. Maybe if, v well, if VAR hadn't existed, Chelsea would have just got the goal. So, you know, that, that's a whole other thing. But Liverpool aren't creating enough chances. Sure, we might have an XG, which reflects very little right now about the team. And I don't really like to trust XG or stats or those kind of things when it comes to, like, the eye test is not passed by Liverpool right now. Klopp, and Klopp has said some unusual things this week. I mean, he said some usual things, but they've been made to look unusual, right? For instance, in his press conference, he's saying, sure, we would love to add a player. But he's also said in, in the past, we are confident with who we have. Now, those two things can be concurrently true, but when you then tweet them out as different quotes and juxtapose them in a certain way, of course it looks as if Klopp is inconsistent. A manager has to back his players. And this is this game was scrappy and it did not reflect the quality of either side, right? But at the same time, Liverpool are in transition. So are Chelsea. So you can see what the difference is 
between them and another team that's transitioning. Damn it. City are transitioning this season and they're the worst best team in the Premier League. So, of course, there are going to be... Jurgen Klopp is going to have lots of different quotes. Of course, people are going to be confused as to what it is Liverpool are trying to do. We know what they're trying to do. They're trying to transition the side into a new formation. They're trying to transition the squad into a new, fresher team. And you can see some of the youth coming through. And they're trying to bed in people like Darwin Nunes, Cody Kakpo. And they will have to bed in another midfielder or two. If they were to have someone like a Mateo, Mateus Nunez or someone like that, right? That would definitely help the side. It would help in terms of control and all these other things. But they will need someone alongside him as well. It doesn't have to be Jude Bellingham, but just someone with a level of dynamism that someone like that can pair up with. And I think Liverpool would love to play that as a two. You can see that this team is sort of... It's in a halfway house still is what I'm going to say. There are still some trade-offs that Klopp and Linders are having to make. And that is clearly frustrating with the team. They don't always trust each other. You can see there's nervousness. You can see that there's a vulnerability and a lack of confidence. And what this side currently need, well, is to be, is to be reminded of the actual power that this team have. I know that sounds sort of cliche, so I'm going to think of a different and better take for you. But what they really need is, a, is someone like transitioning them quicker. And... It has been too slow at Liverpool transitioning out of this era. Last summer was the very latest that you could have bought in a new midfielder or had someone that would have helped transition. And you can kind of see maybe Liverpool are waiting. You saw Steven Gerrard's comments pre-match where he was like, I'll get a plane to Dortmund tomorrow and, you know, talk to uh, talk to Jude Bellingham. I mean, maybe great. He's one of your heroes. Uh, you're one of his heroes and maybe vice versa. But it, it's too late. Like, I get the feeling that we're probably going to see Jude Bellingham go to Real Madrid this summer. We'll see Liverpool get two new midfielders and we'll probably see a couple of guys go finish. For instance, Naby Keita, who has been putting in some great performances, but also they're great tackling performances, poor distribution, poor shots, poor going forward. There was no rhythm today. And sometimes I do wonder whether playing Thiago and Keita is really a sustainable model. You need neither of them balance each other out a lot of the time. They get drawn to the ball quite a lot because they're obviously trying to win it back. And there are times where you find them in similar positions and there's an acre of space for them to move in on the opposite side. Liverpool were lucky to get away with it today. I thought, I thought Mudrick was fantastic when he came on, put Liverpool to the sword. And it was awkward for a little while. But Liverpool also showed how intense they can be, how their pressing can work, how they can make another side panic. But the problem is, without your confidence, the other side aren't going to panic. These things have to come... Like they all have to almost come together to make it one thing rather than lots of little things not quite working. And Liverpool have now drawn five times nil-nil against Chelsea in a row. The last time they did that was Birmingham City in 2010. And so I think we aren't seeing like what we, we're not seeing the side of Liverpool and Chelsea from last season, right? What we're seeing is two sides that were trying to cancel each other out and essentially not lose the game. That shows a lack of confidence from both managers. It shows because the quality within the side is always there for either team to win the game. But I think it shows a lack of confidence in the side and probably not a lack of belief from the managers, but them reading it and saying, OK, well, we aren't going to put these players at huge risk. But they do have to put them out there at some point and say, you know, you, Liverpool have been doing this for some time now. Hey, you're going to go out there, you're going to play the system. And if you suffer in it, that's your own fault. You've got to learn the system. It's the way it is. Liverpool still look awkward. They still don't look like they're playing with their stomach, as Jurgen Klopp says, and not their head. And you can tell the frustration from him. You can also tell when he wants players in certain positions, all these kind of things. I think it's coming. There is a chance you have to write off this season. Nine points off top four right now on equal games to those teams. It's a big gap to bridge. And if you really extrapolate things out, Liverpool don't finish far behind the top four. Do you really want Europa League next season? Do you really want Europa Conference League? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to know who you thought played well tonight. I thought Canate really did lead the back line very well. And I also think Joe Gomez had a few loose touches. Canate's clearly a leader in the future for Liverpool. I love him. I think it's his back line right now, along with Alisson. It's just fantastic. Man of the match, Canate. Appreciate you guys. Chat to you in a while. Much love.